Well, another chapter in the storied career of Murray Sinclair ends today. He is retiring from the Senate after serving five years. Now, this is just one of several high-profile public roles that Sinclair has had, others including serving as Manitoba's first Indigenous judge and as Chief Commissioner of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Take a look back. There are hurdles for Native people within the justice system. There's no question of that. I've met them, I've seen them, I've heard about them. And my clients have certainly been confronted by them. You're either a very, very stupid man or else you're a liar. And frankly, we think you're very intelligent. Well, to know truth, we must begin by telling it. Well, there's no easy solution, so let's get off that horse right now. If we can change the way that people talk to and about each other and think about each other uh, in the long term, that's going to change society and that's what we're really looking for here well with that we're happy to say that senator murray sinclair joins us today senator sinclair thank you for being with us well it's um you're welcome and thank you for having me <laughs> well listen it's an honor to have you on the program uh so here you are your last day as a canadian senator how are you feeling uh, i'm actually feeling pretty good about it um uh, it was always in my plans of course to look at uh, leaving the senate after five years but uh, now that we're literally on the last day, I, I have no uh, indecision, no qualms, uh, no second thoughts about doing that. Mm -hmm. Now, you have spent your five years, much uh, as you have during your whole career, talking about reconciliation, furthering it, uh, trying to uh, undo the damage, if you will, that has been done as a result of colonialism. How do you feel about where our country is, where our people are as a nation on this path of reconciliation? Well, we're certainly talking about it a lot more than we ever have been, and I think um, the majority of Canadians now recognize the historical issues that have gone on. Uh, we're not anywhere near agreement as to the impact of those uh, historical uh, incidents and plans and activities. Uh, I think that we still have a ways to go in order to come to one mind about uh, how we're going to approach all of this. There's also, I think, um, uh, a growing awareness within the, the uh, Indigenous community that uh, there's uh, some work internally that needs to be done as well in order to uh, help uh, Indigenous kids find their identity, uh, get the education that they need, get the supports that they need going forward, and that families need help. Uh, and, uh, and not to speak of the uh, problems that they face on a daily basis, poor housing, poor water supplies, uh, the cost of nutrition, things such as that. So. Uh, we have a long way to go, but I think uh, the conversations have started. I'm, I'm very happy with the way that the educational system has begun to react and the, the way that the story is being told in most schools and the um, interest that teachers are taking in ensuring that the students that they're teaching are learning about this. Well, to your point, the conversation is changing, the awareness is growing, but, but I also wonder about the role governments play in all of this, and to that, I'm in particular thinking about the Prime Minister, because certainly Justin Trudeau talks about reconciliation, but as we heard from uh, NDP MP Charlie Angus uh, just last month, the Liberals have spent nearly $100 million over the last three years fighting uh, Indigenous claims, settlements, lawsuits, and that's despite Trudeau calling Indigenous rights a sacred obligation. How would you measure the accomplishments of this government and what it still needs to do in order to meet the words of reconciliation? Uh, well, I've, uh, I've always warned about the fact that uh, reconciliation as, a, as an issue is, first of all, going to become a political one, and that um, those who are, are in positions of leadership within government are going to uh, utilize it to their advantage politically, uh, and I think we, we just need to recognize that. We need to look for those leaders who uh, fervently believe in this and that um, they want to make something happen, and they want to do something about it. And I think we then have to start measuring against what it is that they're doing. Um, but when we find that leaders are not doing things effectively, then I think we need to look at replacing them. And if we're not happy with the current leadership, if we're not happy with the things that they're doing, with the plans that they've made, with how they're including us, then I think we need to look at um, what it is that we can do in order to improve on the leadership aspect of it. Are you worried? Uh, leaving the Red Chamber with still so much to be done? No. Um, I, I, I said at the time that we filed the uh, 
TRC final report in, in uh, December of 2015, uh, A, that it's going to take us a long time to get there, uh, and B, that the most important actors in the process of reconciliation are not governments, they're not church leaders, they are the people of Canada. And it's the people of Canada who actually have to uh, begin to take control of this. And, uh, and I see that happening uh, around this country. I see people talking about this. I see more stories in the media than I have ever seen before about the injustices that Indigenous people face on a daily basis and that there is uh, growing public support for something to be done about that. And the media has a role to play. I also see uh, the fact that we have church congregations who are stepping up, acknowledging the role that their church has played, but at the same time trying to turn it into a positive by saying, now we must do something about this, not only uh, to assist the Indigenous people who have been affected by it, but also to change the way that we do things. And that's what's really key. It is really up to Canadians and it's not up to government. Mm -hmm. Now, as you know, Julie Payette uh, has resigned as Governor General. Uh, Perry Bellegarde at the Assembly of First Nations in, in discussing that matter, he said it's time for this country to have its first Indigenous Governor General. Uh, what do you make of that? Uh, well, I think it's time. I think that uh, we need an Indigenous uh, a voice in uh, public institutions in this country. I think uh, we need to have an Indigenous uh, member of the Supreme Court of Canada, at least one, uh, and maybe more. I think that we need to have a perspective brought to the discussions that we have at uh, those levels in the representative and the governor general's office who not only understands the history of indigenous people um, but also uh, can equate the lived experiences that they bring to the leadership role that they're expected to play and make it uh, a role that uh, will put this country back on the right path that it should be going on and should have been going on since 1867. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I asked that question, there will be people watching from home thinking, well, why doesn't Marie Sinclair become the next Governor General? Are you open to the idea? <laughs> I am uh, refusing to answer any 613 area code phone calls <laughs> for the last week. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we'll continue to do that. You know, that. it might come from Gatineau, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Um, but it's, it is, a, uh, it is a, a, a significant duty and an important duty. Uh, but I have a family to take care of. I have a wife whose health is not the best, and uh, she needs me. And I made a vow when I married her that I would always take care of her, and that's what I'm going to do. Okay, fair enough. Uh, you're leaving the Senate, as we say, but we, we also have to quickly point out you're not actually retiring because your intent now, if I have this correct, is to focus on a mo memoir that you'll, you'll be writing and also on mentoring Indigenous uh, young lawyers. Uh, talk to us about that and what you're hoping to accomplish with that. Well, one of the areas of growth that has occurred since the TRC has been the area of uh, Indigenous law and not just uh, the law as it affects Indigenous people, but the growth of indigenous governments exercising their legal authorities and enacting their own laws. And that's an area that I think requires appropriate understanding. If indigenous people are going to enact laws based upon their traditions, their customs, their beliefs, then we need indigenous lawyers, uh, or we need lawyers, but indigenous lawyers particularly, who know what those customs, traditions, and beliefs are, uh, who live them, on an ongoing basis, who understand the importance of ceremony, who know the roles that elders play, who know the roles that uh, women play in those communities that are matriarchal in nature, and can ensure that the laws going forward are not simply a reflection of what uh, Canada has been doing and would continue to do, but also have a true and beneficial impact upon the community at large and understand that law from an indigenous perspective is not the same as law from a Western perspective. Mm -hmm. Now, Sander, I know you and I will speak again and that we as a country are going to hear from you again. But for now, I want to end our conversation on the matter of reconciliation that you pointed out. As you say, it, it goes to the people now. So as we think about the reconciliation process, as we think about the calls to action that were listed in the final report of the TRC, what is your message right now to each and every Canadian that is watching you, that is listening to you as you end your time in the upper chamber? Well, as I have said from time to time, uh, reconciliation really turns on a very simple concept, and it is that I want to be your friend. 
and I want to treat you as my friend too. And if we do that, then we will treat each other with respect. And if we are respectful towards each other, uh, with each other, then we will um, be able to understand why we are doing and wish to do what it is that we do. And we can respect that, but at the same time, trust each other moving forward. And uh, that's going to take a little while for us to build. Senator Murray Sinclair, thank you for joining us today. I wish you well on the future journey. Thank you very much. Take care. And that's Senator Murray Sinclair in Ottawa.